Today, I want to continue sharing with you for a few moments on proclaiming the kingdom. You know, that's our theme for this year, 2023. And we believe the kingdom stands above everything else that is offered. There is nothing that can be compared to the kingdom of God. All other gods are idols. All other gods were created. We talk about the creator. If you go on the internet, you will see when Buddha was born, when Muhammad was born, when Haile Selassie was born. But today we can say of our God, age to age he stands. And time is in his hand. He's the eternal one. Before time began, your life was in his hand. And today we worship the one who is worthy to be praised. I want to remind you this morning, as we proclaim the kingdom of God, that God can get you out of any situation that you find yourself in. Even if it is your folly that caused you to be in that situation, God can still get you out of it. Because many of the situations that we end up in sometimes, it is our folly that got us in there. And I'm not saying that you should deliberately do things and God will get you out of it. You should keep allowing your folly to lead you because God will get you out of it. I actually say that against the background that when a season is on, extraordinary things happen. Just about everything in the environment subjects itself to that season. So for example, when drought is on, I mean all the crops is like subjected to the drought. So the government and the systems have to do all they can to get water from here, there, and everywhere to try and keep them going because the, the season is having impact on anything and everything around it. So it's the same thing, you know, with the favor of God. If you are in a season of the favor of God, even if you are, your folly got you in a situation, the impact of that favor is going to penetrate your situation. So I believe that the favor of God is upon you in this time. And so God will help you to overcome those situations so that you can become all that God intended for you to be. I want to remind you that uh, getting out of a difficult situation the possibility of your situation changing is not dependent on your ability to change it. It is dependent on God's ability to change it. And this is exactly why some people can't see their situation changing. Because they're seeing it changing according to their ability. I can't see how it is going to work out. I, I can't see, I've tried this, I've tried that, I've gone here, I've spoken to this, and it's not changing. So you're seeing the possibility of change according to your ability. But I have good news for you this morning, that your situation is about to change, and it's changing because of God's ability. Ability that is superior to your ability. There have been times in my life that I've looked at some situation and said, no, it's not going to work. But I judged it in terms of my ability. I couldn't bring it back. But God 
change the situation. I want to read a scripture from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. And here, Paul gives us a little peek into God's ability. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Because I want you to see God's ability so that you can begin to believe even more in your heart the possibility of change, the possibility of your situation changing, although it has been that way for the last 10 years, the last two years, the last six months, although the doctors may have said this, although the experts may have said this, they did not say what they say, taking in God's ability into account. Now, on, now to him, and notice that him is, starts with a capital H. So we're talking about God here. Now to him, who is what? Able. Able is a root word for ability. Now to him who, who is able to do what? Exceedingly abundantly. Now we could say, we could stop with abundantly. Because abundant is enough. But it says, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. We're talking about God's ability. Now, I know some people that can ask. You know, some, some can ask better than some. That's the reality. But I'm telling you, I know people who, if you give them the chance to ask, you probably would regret giving them, giving them the chance. Let somebody... It's like somebody see you walking down the road and say, I can't get that shoes. The shoes that you're walking in. Pe there are people who can ask. But there are also those who can think. I mean, some of us can think way beyond where we are. So you're at home, but you're really thinking Europe. You're thinking America. You're thinking Africa. You're thinking business. You're thinking five years down the road. There are some of us who can think. Now, the Bible says, to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. That is a glimpse of the ability of God. He can do above what you can ask. So think about what, where you stop. You run out of words. Of course, some of us come to God to petition him about things sometimes, and you don't even know how to express it. You run out of words, or, or, or how to express your heart to God. Well, he's able to do above what you can ask or think according to the power that works in us. That is a glimpse of the ability of God. So God or your situation changing is not dependent on your ability. It's not dependent on the doctor's ability. When I was about 12 years old, I had asthma. And the doctor said, we're sorry, but your asthma is at a state, they call it my asthma. They said, your asthma is at a state that can't be cured. You have to live with this. So... There's a long list of things that I shouldn't be able to do. A pastor named Pastor Stephen prayed for me. 
from 12 years old until now. You want to hear my age now? <laughs> from 12 years old until now, I've not had an attack of asthma. God healed my body because that result was not dependent on the doctor's ability. It's dependent on God's ability. We serve a big God. So Jonah got himself into a position that he couldn't get out with, it, with his own ability. He disobeyed God, jumped into the a boat, and uh, when the folks in the boat realized that he was the problem, they said, hey, all of us, we don't want to die because of you. And Jonah said, all right, let, let's solve this problem. Just throw me overboard. Hesitantly, they did in an effort to save their own life. But I'm saying, now Jonah is in a situation that his ability could not fix. Caught into the belly of the whale. Hallelujah. I could imagine him going down in the belly of the whale. <laughs> saying, this is it. I, I wish I had gone to Nineveh. But, Lord, into, into thy hands I commend my spirit. He saw the end. He couldn't fix the situation in his own ability. But the ability of God sorted him out. I mean, the guy came out, not just went down into the belly of the whale, but came out unscathed. God said, okay, now let's work on the situation. Are you going to go to Nineveh or not? Man, he was ready. He said, Lord, I'm ready this time. I'm going. He was ready to go to Nineveh this time. Went into Nineveh, Nineveh and he, wasn't, he didn't care whether or not things happen his way or not. God, I'm going to do it your way. So the kingdom of God that we offer, that we bring to you, is a kingdom that can change your situation irrespective of. So always remember that your breakthrough, the pos possibility of your situation changing, is not dependent on your ability, but on the ability of God. And you know, there are two different ways by which you can see the demonstration of the supernatural in your life, generally speaking. So one way is that you can be an, in an environment where the supernatural is uh, being demonstrated and it impacts your life, irrespective of your faith sometimes. So it is important. That is why it's important not to forsake the assembling of the brethren and all that kind of stuff because you just don't come into this kind of anointing sometimes by yourself. So as we come together, you can be in the space and the supernatural anointing that is at work penetrates your situation. The next way is as you practice kingdom principles. As you continue to practice what the word of God says, you get to that place where you open yourself for the demonstration of the power of God in your life. And you will see that in immeasurable way. So in terms of being in the space, I think it's John 9 or somewhere there. Uh, uh, there was a man by the pool of Silo. And the Bible said he was there about over 30 years. Could be Pool of Siloam or Bethesda, one of them. But here's a man there, and Jesus showed up on the sea. The presence. The Messiah showed up. So Jesus said to him, Hey, what's what's up? What's your situation? 
said, well, you know, these people are so unreasonable. Because, you know, the angel come once per year and trouble the water, and the first person who get in the water would be healed. And these people are so unreasonable because every time I try to get in there, somebody jump ahead of me. Every time I read that, I'm thinking, what's wrong with this guy? What's wrong with this guy? I mean, I want to be healed too. You think I'm going to miss my opportunity? Maybe people are there so many years. And here, here's the supernatural presence ready to do something for him. But his focus was on how people are unreasonable. I mean, they wouldn't give me a chance, and then they go next year. Well, who is to tell that I can get in there next year? Either? So, he said, Jesus said, do you want to be made whole? He said, yes. Now, the point is, he's in the presence of the supernatural. He didn't even have the faith for the healing. But he happened to be in the environment, and that supernatural penetrated his situation. Very important to be in that place of the supernatural in terms of practicing the principles and allowing God's power to work in your life, we see the situation with Ruth. Now, Ruth was a Moabitess, or what we'd call a pagan person. The Moabites did not worship God. They don't even believe in, in, in Jehovah God. They have their own God. So their practices, their cultures, their culture was different. They practiced idolatry. But when Naomi was ready to go back home, Ruth said, entreat me not to leave thee. Not to return from following after you. And that was good enough. But she went on. She said, where you go, I will go. Your God shall be my God. Well, she switched something on right there. Your God shall be my God. Well, if, if, if you want this God, then you're accommodating the supernatural. And I, against all odds, she left her religion, left her culture, left paganism, and followed after God. The next thing you know, Ruth is in the messianic land. power of God when you practice the word of God. There's no telling what can happen. You open up yourself to supernatural uh, manifestation of the kingdom of God. And we live in a time and a day where God wants his power to be manifested. There's some folks that since the beginning of this year, 2023, has not seen a manifestation of the power of the supernatural God in their life. That is serious. No supernatural provision, no supernatural healing, no supernatural connection, no revelation. One morning you woke up uh, to see God in a different way. Nothing. Oh, no. You need to come to prayer next first Saturday if you're in that position. <laughs> we'll keep you here all day until you can see something. Because we can't make it without the supernatural. Let's read from Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Let's read a, a few verses there. Then God said, Let us make man 
in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion. Let them have what? Or oh, the next word for dominion is rulership. Rule, rulership. Let them have dominion. Let's read that part together. Let them have dominion. We never got it. Let's do it again. Let them have dominion. That includes you. Over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, cre uh, he created them. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion. Here goes that word again. Have dominion. Have what? Have dominion or rulership over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. I want to point out from those verses, and, and um, I, I will actually wrap up around this thought. <laughs> Doesn't mean the next 60 seconds. <laughs> but... God gave man rulership, not ownership. God gave man rulership, not ownership. In Psalm 24, it says, the earth is the Lord's. So somebody already owns it. And the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. He owns it. So he gave man dominion, rulership over the earth, and not ownership. Now, this is a concept that we are going to have to lock into when we understand kingdom as kingdom citizens. Because especially when we never had anything, we are excited about owning everything. I mean, you get a chance to hold on to something, you lock into it. This is mine. You don't know how I work for this. But the truth is, God gave us rulership and not ownership. So, I know you might, you might say, I have, I have 10 pairs of shoes. And I understand what you're saying. But really, you're ruling over them. Because, you see, if God tells you to give two to me, <laughs> your job is to obey what he's saying. Because he, 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 they really belong to him. You're just ruling over the thing. So you've, you've got to transfer it. And uh, this is how the thing works. If you rule well, so you transfer when God said transfer, whether shoes or money or dress or sugar cane or whatever. If you transfer when God said transfer, then God's also going to transfer to you. And the more you transfer is the more you prove that you can rule. So the more will come into you. It was last week Sunday. I was in Tulsa. And the Lord told me to send three thousand dollars to somebody here in Jamaica. Three thousand. Okay, that's not that's not the biggest ask that I've ever had. So fine. Sent it off. I mean, the amount of thank you that was coming on the phone, I'm I mean. Oh, that's not too big of a deal. Calm down, calm down. But obviously, the person was really in need of it. I had a piece of tool I wanted to buy for about 300 US dollars. 
So I was going to church, and I, this guy that was taking me, friend, I asked him if he could source it, if there's somewhere that we could get it um, on the way to church or back because it was a very hectic schedule. He said, Pastor Dean, I, I, want, to, I want to buy it for you. He said, yeah, I'll give you the money to buy it. He said, no, 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 I want to pay for it. Three, 300 plus dollars. I said, Lord, thank you. I went to church, and a gentleman looked at me. I'm concerned about what's happening in church, and came up and said, I want to give you $100. Okay. All right. Praise the Lord. I receive it because I realize transfers are happening. Now. At the end of that evening, the pastor said, Pastor Deans, you know, I was looking at you in church today, and I want to give you $500 personally for yourself to just bless you. I said, what? Lord, why didn't you tell me to transfer some more? <laughs> <laughs> You see, I, I'm showing you the principle of understanding that you don't own it. Some of you have that bank account locked. You don't even remember the combination to open it. Because you own it. You have to understand that we are rulers over, over it. So you remember the story now with the rich young ruler? So he came to Jesus and said, hey. You know, love thy neighbor as thyself and um, love the Lord. I, I passed that already. Yeah, God, I've got that part. Just like some of our folks. I say, okay, sell what you have and give it to the poor. Because they don't belong to you. Huh? The Bible said he went away sorrowful. Couldn't deal with that because he couldn't come to the place that he was a ruler and not an owner. God wants you to wake up to this reality as a kingdom person. To understand that if you allow him to rule. That is why things like the tithe and all of that. The, the, the issue is not even that um, the amount that you give. It's about you ruling over the thing for, for God on God's behalf. Because it doesn't belong to you. So he's telling you how he wants you to appropriate it. He said, I want you to bring one tenth here and maybe he tells you to sow a seed here or there or whatever. You are ruler over the thing. Over the thing. We read it in Genesis. He gave us dominion, rulership, not ownership. But God, that is my best shoes. So what? It's not yours. That's a problem. Your best. <laughs> but it belongs to God. Everything that you own. Or everything that is in your possession. The house. The car. The money. The clothes. It all belongs to. And he has given you responsibility. To be a steward over it. And when you begin to understand that, then he can transfer other stuff. Because you see, if you are still in the mode of ownership and lock everything tight, then anything that he, he wants to get to Brother Murdoch and he wants to pass it through you, you're going to detain it. So he can't bring it through you. So we have to get to that place. We would say, Lord, my life is in you. It belongs to you. That's what it means to say, all to Jesus I surrender. Let's read Matthew chapter 25 from verse 14. And as we look for that, let me say, if you try to own the stuff 
that God gave you to rule over. He will transfer it from your life without your consent. Might transfer it to the doctor. <laughs> he might transfer it to your lawyer. He might transfer it to the school that your kids go to. In other words, you're going to pay some bills that oh, might transfer to your insurance company if you don't work with God. <laughs> the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one, he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability, and immediately went his way. So according to how they could manage to rule out their, their level of maturity, he gave them. Then he who had received five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. So, after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, saying Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you, I will make you ruler. ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. He who he also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you have delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. So God called him good and faithful because he ruled well. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler. I will make you ruler. Over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Of your Lord. Then he who had received one talent. Came and said. Lord. I never knew you. Sorry. I knew you to be a hard man. Reaping where you have not sown. And gathering where you have not scattered seed. I was afraid. And went and hid your talent in the ground. Look. There. You have what is yours. Let's read the next verse. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant. Can you imagine God calling people wicked and lazy? That's how serious he takes it when you don't rule well over what he has put into your care. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and I gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. Roll it. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. A man who already has ten, you're taking the other man one and giving it to him. Transferring it. Why? Because that man ruled well. That's why the Bible said to whom much, um, to those who have much, much will be given. Because it is not a matter of God favoring somebody, but if you, it's a principle. If you rule well over the thing, the principle will work for you. So more will come to you. More will come to you so you can rule and be a good representative of the kingdom of God. So, ladies and gentlemen, I beg of you today to stop owning what is around your life and understand that you are supposed to be ruling over it. And as you rule under the inspiration 
of the Holy Ghost. I believe you're set for a lot of transfer. Because it is according to God's ability and not your ability. So that's why when God tells you to give and you don't, or, you know, you just decide that I know what that person did with their money or something they did last week or last month. I ain't giving them nothing. What are you doing? You're shutting down your space. God can't work through you anymore. So guess what? He'll, got, he'll have to transfer around you. I believe that as a people, as we learn rulership, having dominion as opposed to ownership, because you see, rulership is progressive. Dominion, um, ownership is kind of stagnant. You, you own this, so you stop. So I put my boundary here. Don't come over my yard. This is mine. That's how we fence up what we own. Whether in terms of property or anything else. But as we understand that we're rulers over the earth, what God has given us. You realize that, hey, you're a gift to the whole world. So you're not stuck in any one place. I believe that as we understand the kingdom, as we declare the kingdom, as we preach the kingdom this year and people see the merits of the kingdom, we're expecting greater manifestations of the kingdom. We're expecting to grow in our maturity in the kingdom. And I expect to see the kingdom working in dimensions, in measures like we've never seen it before. The kingdom is here and now. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your kingdom that is at work in our lives. It is you, Holy Spirit, that can penetrate our heart and softness to move from owners to rulers. There's so many who have been anchored into being owners. But we know with God, nothing shall be impossible. So we thank you that the dominion mandate is still alive. Is still working in the hearts, lives, this people. And so our reaching out to each other is not premised on our emotions. It's not based on who we like and who we don't like. But we're ruling as your agents here on earth over that which you have entrusted us care. So God, we submit our hearts and our minds to you. Lord, we repent for those times that we did not uh, consent to ruling when you led us. Because maybe through our ignorance or even through disobedience, we wanted to hold on to what we thought was ours. But today, we submit to you. And we say, have your way, Lord Jesus, in our lives. We receive of your hand today the dominion mandate is at work in our lives and in our spirit. Thank you for working through us. Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Thine is the kingdom today. Thine is the power. The glory forever. Awesome. Incredible.
credit but God. Thank you for what you're doing in our hearts, in our lives. the worship team to just give me a quick few minutes here, please. Just come. So it's all honor, all glory, all honor, all glory. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you all stand, everybody, for a moment, please? Worship the Lord for a moment. Oh. 
ever ask Jesus to come into your heart, to be the Lord of your life, or maybe you want to serve the Lord, but you're not walk, walking with the Lord right now, and you want to commit your life to the Lord or recommit your life to the Lord, you, you'd like this day to be just a new beginning in your walk with the Lord. Just raise your hand if you're here, we'll pray for you. I want to always give you that opportunity. I mean, the last time Sister Brown was here, that lady was glowing so much. I never knew it was the last Sunday that we would see her. The Bible says our life is like a vapor that appear for a little while and then vanishes away. You can't take a chance with your life. Is there anyone who don't know Jesus? You want us to pray for you. Slip your hand up. We'll identify you and pray for you. Thank you, my sister. All right, so we have one hand. Anyone else? All right. Could you come with us, my friend? Go ahead. Thank you so much. Amen. God bless you. What's your name? All right. Who invited you? Tashana. Come stand with her, Tashana. Please. Tashana is an evangelist. You know, she invites so many people to church. And we thank God for her. But we so thank God for, for you and for um, your desire to serve the Lord. All right. I want, I'm going to lead you in a prayer that I want you to repeat. And I'm going to ask the congregation repeat also as we uh, take care of this situation. Just hold her hand. Come on. Say, Lord Jesus, with all these witnesses present today, I publicly confess you as Lord and Savior of my life. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and be the Lord of my life from this moment and forever. I promise, Lord Jesus, that I will serve you for the rest of my days. And I thank you, Lord, for keeping me in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and put your hands together. Welcome her to the family of God. God bless you. We're so happy for you. Um, Youth and everybody will um, be talking to you, just reaching out, and um, we thank God for the opportunity to bring people come into the kingdom of God. Amen. You may be seated for a moment.